problem. Thank you for having me. No problem. Um, okay, so I always start with back to the start. I did some research on you, firstly. Oh, God. So I didn't make mention this <laughs> to you two seconds ago. Uh, I kind of have a good bit of research to a point, and then there's a point where you have no online footprint. So, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> I disappeared. <laughs> He just disappeared from the internet and the world off the grid. I don't know where he went to. So there's a, a good bit of information I have to there. And the discussion points will probably get a bit thinner and you might have to fill in the gaps. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to come off really ignorant. <laughs> That's fine. Um, so I read on your college website that you started when you were 14. Which um, is quite late. Is that true? Or no? no, that's probably not true. I started... <laughs> No, it's not true. I started in fifth class in primary school. My mum's friend started um, the basketball team and my mum was like, oh, she def she needs people to go to it. Like, she's starting it. And I was like, okay, grand, I'll start it. And we had a guy called Carlitos. Carlitos, that's still around coaching. And then, yeah. Sounds like a made-up name. <laughs> no, he was really good friends with Jerome and I knew Jerome. Ah, okay. Then, then I started going to like his camps, sixth class, and because um, he coached in Holy Faith, which is like where I went to secondary school. So I didn't know that. So he coached. Mm -hmm. so you're talking about Carlito, the made up guy? No, Car no Carlitos. Uh, Carlitos coached in primary school. So I actually think he was ah. still. I think he's still <laughs> there. But he was very, very good friends with Jerome, um, and that's okay. how I went to the camps and stuff. And then. Right. I was delighted that he coached in Holy Faith purely because it was right around the corner for me. So okay, so <laughs> he would be just my coach there. for anyone that's been in the UK, because I spent a lot of time there, and probably if you could watch it from the UK, in fact, I checked and there is. So okay. or, or anywhere else really, uh, it's Jerome Westbrook you're talking about, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Sorry, it's a very famous Irish basketball family. Uh, the Westbrooks yes. uh, were based in Dublin. That's okay. You don't need to. <laughs> I'll, I'll do the context. Um, <laughs> So yeah, basically Jerome, Jerome's just just played in the Irish basketball league for years, and he's he's coached yeah. tons of people, especially on the north side of Dublin around your Clontarf. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, there. so he would have been uh, main places that he probably coached was Holy Faith and Clontarf, and then the boys Fintons, Saint Fintons and Sutton. Remember that was him. like his two schools. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know he also did the girls stuff. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. How much yeah. do you think he benefited from having like? Jerome Westbrook, he's oh, like he, he is up there for in my books. Um, he definitely started my career, helped me with the rest of it. Like he's influential. I would say I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been the player that I was. I wouldn't have been able to experience half the things I would have if it wasn't for him coaching me. Definitely, yeah. yeah I owe he, a lot to him. Yeah, and he's he seems like he's a good coach. He's very articulate. He kind of. You know. It's brilliant. He's he's probably he's probably one of the best coaches I've ever had. Um, I like some of my I have some mad memories of him, but definitely he knew his stuff. I mean, basketball is and was his life. Like that was just his whole family was. So it was always surrounded by it. And I feel like those are the best coaches when their life is just submerged in it. Like similar to Mark Ingle who's my coach at the minute in DCU, like the Ingle family is just submerged in basketball. The quality of what they know is next level, I feel, to anybody else because it's like all that they talk about, you know? And yeah. that was the same with the Westbrooks. Uh, yeah. yeah, I heard Isaac, he goes, there's a guy on my team called Hillary Nets and he does like his kind of Instagram thing and Isaac yeah. came on and said, they just talk about it at the dinner table because the whole family's in it, you know? Oh, they, yeah. They just, they just love it. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so then, mm -hmm. that, so Holy Faith, that's in Clontarf, right? It's in Clontarf, yeah. And yeah. we had we had a really, really good year of girls that played two years above me, which would have been like Sarah and Becky Woods were on that team. Sarah McGrath, Leah Westbrook, like who else was on that team? Loads, loads of influential players that went on to play for like for Ireland club and everything. Um, but that was great to have those girls to look up to. And then myself and Jenny McGrath, who was Sarah McGrath's younger sister, who um, was really like excellent underage player. Um, we got to play up a couple of times with that team. And it was just really, really, really cool because like you're, you're looking up to this team that like they never lost a game. I don't think when all 12 of them were together, like collectively yeah. they had 
an excellent 12 person squad and when they were all together i don't think they ever lost a game in like the six years they were together or something so that was this, really cool this is all holy faith school this is Mm-hmm. This is Holy Faith, God knows how many years ago, but... Um, so that's almost like the equivalent. When we were growing up, it was like Kalosh, the Aina, actually, funny enough. I'm not saying I can yeah. replace them, but that was the team. There was a couple of teams. There was Malachi's in like Belfast. There was a couple mm-hmm. of teams. So Holy Faith would be the, the kind of that. Yeah, yeah, and like Isagon would have been a big rival of ours as well, which is... Isn't that sister to Kosh Aina? Isn't it? No, yeah, is that? I've heard of the team. The team. I'm not sure if it's sister. Okay, to, uh, knowledge ends <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, no, it was. Um, it was definitely. It was really. They were really, really good experiences and learning a lot from, like, to train with those girls. To train with Jerome was just like next level stuff, which definitely helped me underage for sure. That's actually just crazy. That you, I didn't know that at all because. That would ex- that that would explain the so he's almost responsible for that whole generation of players as well. Oh know? yeah, yeah, and he's still there. Um, like he's still doing really, really well. Like there's a number of young girls that have come up through there. Like Sirsha and Brona Power Cassidy, he coached them. Um, they were a couple of years ago. They won title. Like he's he's done really, really well in Holy Faith. It definitely wow, that's known as a like. basketball school. Yeah. Wow, I did not know that. That was a whole part of the the, the Westbrook story I just missed. Um, yeah, like he had huge success with Fintons as well. Yeah, that's why. That's exactly how I know him. Yeah. Yeah, because obviously, like the lads went there and he coached all of his sons and stuff. Um, and then Fintons had great teams for years. Um, but no, he did excellent work with Holy Faith. Still does as well. So yeah. still there. Wow, that's a, mm-hmm. that's unbelievable. That's responsible for a lot of good basketball players. Like like in terms of like the. The, the women's the, oh yeah anything's wow mm-hmm. okay so so uh, uh, Becky and Sarah were a year ahead of you they were two years ahead of me yeah ah okay mm-hmm. yeah I met them I came back for you in 2008 I met them at a basketball camp Ken Black's basketball camp oh yeah Do yeah because Jody yeah Jody Black would have played for Holy Faith as well and um, right like okay. for fourth fourth fifth and sixth year I think she joined Holy Faith so they became really friendly with Jody and the Black family, yeah. So they would have. I don't. Was Jody there for all six years? I'm not quite sure. Um, but yeah, they they were very close with that. Uh, the two families, yeah. So no other team would have had a chance. You guys are just a massive basketball school. <laughs> oh yeah. Back then, like seriously, back then we were deadly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get Nobody had a chance. Just forget about it. But it's it's cool when you get that because you, you get like you said you, you get to learn from those players a year ahead of you and you you kind of playing against them every day and you're pushing yourself. So immediately oh, yeah. you're benefiting from massive. Like I was like twelve, thirteen playing against Leah Westbrook and like Leah Westbrook to me back then was like this superstar post player and I was like oh my god like I get to play up with her and compete against her like obviously get my rear end handed to me at every training session because I'm trying to do something but it was brilliant um for me just to compete with these girls and just like learn from them and get any advice from them that they could and they were also really really nice people as well which definitely helps yeah and I actually strangely enough ran into Leah on a different basketball journey for me I was in the UK and she was doing her master's in Durham Durham University. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and then I don't know how I ended up meeting the girls team. And she was on a postgraduate basketball scholarship. So was I. So I had no idea she was going to be there. And then I just go, you're at Westbrook's. And then she's she's like, yeah, yeah, I'm Isaac's sister. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Like, just running into, like, it's such a small little basketball I world. know. But isn't it great at the same time? <laughs> oh, that was, yeah, it was amazing. Because um, yeah. I grew up playing against Isaac. So then I kind of knew Isaac from, fin- from Finton's. So, yeah, uh, just to to run into her in the UK and to know somebody from from Ireland is deadly as well. And she's such a yeah. nice person, that, like you said, um, you know, mm-hmm. really talented basketball player from Ireland and dead sound. She's going to yeah. Enjoy. I'm going to ask her to come on as well. Actually, oh, exactly. do yeah, because she had her first full season there back last year, and obviously they they won the cup. So um, it's great that she's back playing again. So I saw the cup win the the, the and she yeah. did very well actually. Um, she okay. did, yeah. She did, yeah. She, I saw that she did. <laughs> she, did. <laughs> she did. She did. No, she's just very good. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did. 
we won't bring up the semifinal. It was the semi. You guys, yeah. Oh, in yeah, in Brunel, yeah. Those guys were. That's that. Do you know what? I watched the match there the other night. On, Why? It's, on, it's on YouTube. <laughs> Why? Because I just wanted to see the game. Because I, I remember I we had the game before you guys had played. Mm, yeah, you day. guys had played. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and 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 I didn't really get to watch it, so I went and watched it the other night, uh, just to see the game, what it was like. God, that's a that's those um. It, those Brunel Americans are, are, are very, very So talented. they yeah. were, like I, Sarah was, um, I saw Sarah for the first time probably like, what was it, two days ago or something. And um, we were talking about the basketball and basketball season and cup and stuff and briefly mentioned that game that we talk about so much. Um, Sorry. <laughs> we had, no, like it was a pointy, it was, it was a huge part of our season. It was a huge learning curve. It was, it was obviously a big blow, um, but when I say that they stepped up and absolutely dominated that game, like they 100% did, and you have to hand it to them. Their level of athleticism during that game was exceptional. We had played them previously in Dublin, and they were not like, but they were obviously very good players. We beat them. Um, it wasn't an easy game of any sort, but we were like, okay, well, we know how to handle these players, and we had watched prior games, but they knew and from speaking with them afterwards they knew that the cup was like the biggest thing the so that they the one. so it was kind of not that they were holding off for the cup but that was their time to shine and they, they, they were did. fired up for it. They, they they looked fired up for it too like yeah, i'm after. i'm six foot one and those girls were jumping over me at some time to get a, like a rebound like it was insane like they were ready for it and it was it was a very bad loss for us, big time. But the, like, you have to give credit where credit's due. They were, yeah, they were, just... they were up for it. They were, they were geared up. Oh, yeah. I think, I think some of your key players watching the game didn't play as well as as you would have seen them play. Like, like you guys were first in the league, so there's clearly a lot of games where where your key players would have been. We yeah, yeah. like yeah. we had it. We had a great team last year, and we we're really, really good in some games. And that game collectively, even if one person throughout the year didn't have a good game, somebody else would step up. Right. But that game, I think Rachel probably played the best. And Rachel, yeah, she like, had a good you, game. She had a great, no, she did have a great game, but you need somebody else at Rachel having a great game. Like, yeah, you can't have the one person have a good game. And no, it. no. And she's such a selfless player as well that, she won't score all of the points <laughs> like she's such a nice person um but that won't happen for like Rachel will want to pass the ball want to like create stuff as much as possible as well so like it's not like we have a May Fainer on our team who right. could have controlled that game we didn't and we don't that that's why we did so well but that game we, none of us really just don't know what happened honestly we were weren't I'm not, I'm not gonna say we weren't ready for it because we had obviously prepared a lot but just didn't go in our favor at all. Didn't go in your favor. Oh, trust me, we lost the final, and I, I know I the know. feeling very well, <laughs> and I felt the same feelings. And like, and it's okay. I think. I, well, I'm older, so I'm getting back in my career. So, the I'm better at dealing with losses than I used to be. When I was younger, yeah. I, was, I was very bad. At, even if I somebody would bring it up, I'd be like, feelings, you know, just like, oh, don't talk to me about it. But whereas now, oh. I'm, I'm kind of better at that. But yeah. <laughs> you're probably I don't know. I don't know. I like because then you have like the night out in Cork afterwards, which is like one of the biggest nights out of the year. And I just know that I just wanted to go home. Like I was oh, like, this really? is not. Oh, uh, it, yeah. it definitely. It, it irked you. A big yeah. blow. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. It, yeah. It, it's but tough I, because you guys, if you guys are top of the league as well, and the cup is the big one, right? The cup is the one you want to. Yeah, I can yes. see that you're like, this is we're strong enough here to be in the final. But I mean, they played really impressively. Um. Oh, they did. Like, but, particularly uh, the Americans, like, um, mm-hmm. they, they were just, there was a lot of stuff going in for them as well. I mean, there was a lot of, and there was also, yeah. like, and I'm impartial, so I, I don't care either way, right? Like, I mean, I, yeah. obviously you're on the show, but the refs at the end of the game kind of swallowed their whistles on, on a couple of the calls I felt as well. So I was just watching it, and I was like, oh, the refs look like, obviously you can't blame the refs, but no you're, you're but we, knew, we also here. sorry i'm not going to say anything that if refs are listening but like cork refs like in cork it's difficult we all know that 
like I'm sure I'm sure Cork people play, players like Cork players feel that when they come up to Dublin but we knew that the refs were going to be diff- hard not difficult but hard and I don't think Meredith and myself did anything to help us in that situation like two post players and we both got fed out of the game never yeah, happened that's, that's you know true. it's yeah, was a, that's a good point. Yeah, because because you, you ended um, up coming out, didn't you? Um, early, you ended up getting five. We, we both. I got. I think Mayor. I did I get five before five before Mayor got five. I don't even know, but like, I would be very. I'd go back watch the whole game, like talk to Mark about it, like what's the story here, and he's like, a lot of those fouls probably. Like when you look back, they're not like hard fouls. Meredith no. got loads of off. She got a fair few offensive fouls as well, which she would usually not do um, in normal games. Which she found that hard to deal with then for the rest of the game. Like she was like, "Oh well, if I attack, then are they gonna? What's the story here? Like I'm second guessing all of her moves, which didn't help." Yeah, and because they were being so aggressive, going to the basket, you were mm-hmm. go- inevitably going to pick up fouls. I mean, they were literally coming in from the three point line. So and. You, yeah, it's almost tough for you when there's two of them kind of attacking the basket constantly. And you're trying to help across. You, you see, potentially get more fouls that way. Oh, and that's what happened. Like, Mary and myself would be quite dominant on the boards anyway, on a good like for box outs and stuff. And we like to think or that we're not bad at it. And we work very hard against each other in training. Like we go against each other and we make each other better. But then those girls like when they're jumping over your head and you're trying to go get it but you're picking up nitty gritty fouls you're just like ah, like it's hard it was a hard game but they yeah. definitely put themselves in a better position to win they did it more tactically they did it better so yeah yeah i mean they have a good team too i mean the irish players mm-hmm. are good uh colin o'reilly's younger sister i hadn't seen her play before but then trying the game they mentioned that it was colin's sister and she's yeah, she just made... really tenacious like you know just really getting after i would us. i would have played with sinead under 18s um, with Orla back in the day and then Sinead hasn't played for a few years and this is her first year back right, and then okay. um, yeah like it kind of us focusing on the Americans definitely probably allowed the Irish people even though they, we didn't even when we focus on the Americans they still still scored loads and loads of points um, <laughs> well, they played but, well too I mean good. yeah the Irish people definitely stepped up all across the board like you had some really really good uh younger players there you had Simone do well you had another player which she shot a three in my face and I can't remember her name um multiple times but like what's, what's the girl the lefty girl she's a left-handed girl she's young for she's them. the girl because then I think she got injured didn't she um and her name has just left me because she didn't ah. play one of the girls didn't play in the final because she hurt her hand at training ah, right, uh, okay. Katie, Katie Walsh Katie that's Katie? it yeah that's Katie Walsh she was very impressive she was she a played baller well. She's yeah, very absolutely. impressed. Very impressed mm-hmm. with her. And again, just tenacious fire. They just seemed really up for it. It's not that you guys weren't, but stuff was falling their way. And sometimes in a cup, it's 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 not like the league. It's they know what to do or die. And it just oh, things yeah. were falling their way on the day mm-hmm. as well. You know, and then the fouls and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, we should probably move on from this because <laughs> you end up having a whole podcast about the semi final that you yeah, lost, uh, which is not gonna, no, no, I'll be up all night thinking about it now. Thank you. Here we are. Um, Okay, all right. So where did we get off? Sorry. Oh yeah. So I got some points here around you did play other sports, you played around hockey, mm-hmm. track, mm-hmm. daily cross country. That's a lot of sports. Yeah, I I played cross country. I played cross country. I ran cross country. One of our teachers in Holy Faith was a really, really good cross country runner, got into that and I found that that helped me with the endurance of a basketball game really really liked cross country and i would just try and do any sport any like event that was held in sanctuary that i would go to i would do it hurdles whatever oh she's got long legs she must be good no but i'll do it um did hockey up to a certain point um and then my sister was also playing hockey but uh i think one of the girls on her team injured her back very badly so my mom was like nope that's done and then I played right. Gaelic. I loved Gaelic. Played Gaelic for Clontarf and absolutely loved no it. No way. Okay. I found there was a huge crossover between Gaelic and basketball. Massive. Um, massive. And I, t- I was able to take all of my aggression out on the Gaelic field. And, That's um, the best part. That is the best yeah. part of things. <laughs> yeah. Just show, being able to like run into somebody and show them and flatten them when you're bigger it's than unreal. them. It's unreal. Yeah. It's the best ever. Yeah, I used to love oh, yeah. <laughs> um, But yeah, and then... 
I probably played Gaelic up until I was like sixteen, and then when, once the Irish teams became more frequent for me, like playing underage and like weekends and stuff, I just concentrated on basketball. Okay. Much. At this point, you're six foot one, or were you like a late person to shoot up? I was five foot eleven and a half for a long time because I never wanted to be six foot. I thought that that was outrageous. <laughs> And then once, um, as, in, as in you were actually 5'11", or you were saying you were 5'11"? No, I was like, I was actually six foot, but I was like, oh no, I'm five foot eleven and a half. I won't be six foot, um, <laughs> which going looking back is mad. But I was six foot probably. When was I six foot? Probably like fourth year, fifth, uh, fourth year. But like there was a lot of taller girls in my year as well, um, so I probably didn't feel that tall. But it definitely helped with the basketball. Um, when you're that age. <laughs> oh, yeah. absolutely, yeah. At this mm-hmm. point, you're, you're, what, you're 15, 16? Oh, six, uh, yeah, 15, 16 would be around that point. Uh, was I, I wasn't, I was 5 foot 10, 5 foot 11 when I was 15, I'd say, because, or even 5 foot 10, I'd say, 5 foot 10, yeah. Um, I, I can't remember. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, no, that's true. <laughs> Why would you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so so you you get to to sixteen, and then yep. I, I have your next destination. But how did you make the jump? Then I assume you're on some of the national teams underage. Is that mm-hmm. okay? yeah, yeah? So since I since fifteen, there was an under sixteen team that started training when I was under fifteen, and then every year, I think I was on an underage team up until. Obviously, there I wasn't on the under twenties. I played under eighteens twice, and then I left. But that was it. Yeah. Okay. And then, where did you get the opportunity for? Because I always find this part really interesting. But the different ways people end up going to, like America, for example, if they yeah. America. How did your opportunity come about? Was it tough? Because what uh, Jason Killeen said, he was talking to a, a janitor, and then <laughs> someone else. I mean, there's some ridiculous stories, like, like just totally like uh, unorthodox or kind of. Um, yeah not, not traditional or there was no structure around it. so back then like very very few people went to the states it wasn't as common as it is now um i didn't really know how to go about it jerome helped a lot jerome it was really jerome and my dad my dad probably sent he got all of my irish dvds and put them on like actual dvds and like cds back then and sent them to colleges and that's how he did it mm-hmm. um I love the States. Like I have when I think when I was like five was my first time there. And my mom still remembers me turning around saying to her that I was born in the wrong country. Like I just always wanted to, to go. go there for a period. Yeah. So um, me playing there would, was like a dream, but I wasn't 100 percent sure if it was going to happen. So I actually also applied to DCU Um and they, I don't know if they still do, but they had the like elite sports scholarship there and applied yeah. for that. And I actually got it for like my first year of college because I was, I just didn't know if anything was going to come to fruition. And then I think it was late February, March, maybe I think the time around the mocks probably. And then um, I got a call from a college in Kansas. I was like, what? is this um where is this <laughs> i have no idea where kansas is and then <laughs> that seems I, to be the first thing everybody says when they find out they're like where is that on the map because it's a yeah. country yeah i know um and i decided sure why not i might as well go dcu had said to me that they would keep the scholarship for a year if it didn't work out so i could still come back and have the th- yeah. the scholarship because i wanted to do what did i want to do sports exercise science or something and it was like 490 points or something and i was like well if i don't get that and like kind of they were very very helpful not that like they were like don't worry about it like if you get it's the big, still there get, it's still there so that was a good way for me to go because i had a bit of security back home Perfect. just in case just in case it didn't work out like i knew yeah you don't know right i think the year prior Previous to that, Claire Rocco had gone to Iona, and the O'Reilly twins were gone to Bingham in New York, and the O'Reilly twins stayed. I think Claire came home, so I was a bit apprehensive. I didn't really know what to expect, um, so I went to Kansas with my mum, and it was wild. That's funny. You said Kansas. <laughs> I'm thinking of Dorothy. 
<laughs> I yeah, it was like it, my, my, I remember we were we flew to Colorado and then drove down to Kansas, and um, my mom was like, "Yeah, I'm good luck here." And the main reason she said good luck, she was like, "Well, you won't be spending any of our money because there's no shops here." I was like, "Oh God," um, but it was an experience that was unbelievable. I because I think at the moment, like kids are doing prep schools and that's a deadly way to get in. It's really, really cool. Back then I was like, well, I didn't get it. Like I didn't get any substantial offers to division one schools. It was all like division two or division three. And I wanted to go to the division one school. So I was like, well, my dad was like, well, why don't you go to the JUCO, the JUCO route, route, excuse me, and then pop in somewhere. I was like, okay, cool. We'll try your dad, that. Your dad seems very knowledgeable. Am I missing something here? Is your dad like a basketball <laughs> no, legend he is, or something? <laughs> no. He, sorry, my phone's about to die. Take a couple of spins. He's oh, not yeah. um, a basketball legend at all. He's just is a very knowledgeable man and um, helped me out a huge ton. A huge amount. Um, That's incredible. He, That's really cool. Hold on a second. I actually just finally... Oh, We're about to lose you, Harry. Oh, I got you now. Sorry, I just had to put you on speaker. Excuse me. <laughs> um, no, he he knew how much basketball meant to me. He's very sporty himself. Like, he's what age? 60 odd. He's, no, he's not 60 yet. But, like, he's still running, playing football, like, cycling. Like, he's just, he loves sports. So, him and I bonded greatly over basketball. Uh, he didn't. He never played basketball. Didn't know the rules really, but he knew that this was important to me, so he tried very hard. Um, yeah. So a lot of it I do. And he he still has like all of the emails and all of the people that he contacted on this Excel spreadsheet, and it's just fascinating to look back and go, Incredible. you know, the work that you put in to get me out of the country. <laughs> like, <laughs> just get her out <laughs> of the house. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow, Dad, you really wanted me to leave, um, but. No, Kansas was great. Um, I really enjoyed my, really, really enjoyed it. I was sick my first year. I got quite sick. Um, so I didn't play that much. And so that's why I usually one. Holy um, Community College. Is this the one that yeah, I got? Holy there? Community that, that yeah, Holy Community College. That is it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I missed out like the majority of the season the first year, so I stayed the second year. And um, because usually for JUCO, you may not stay the two years as well. Um, but I didn't have a lot of uh stats and stuff to approach colleges, so I was like, well, I kind of have to stay. <laughs> um, and it was great fun, I absolutely loved it. <laughs> it was a great time, it was so so different i couldn't even describe it when i used to come home i'd be like lads like i don't know how to explain this it's mad it's backwards nearly to what we're used to but the people were so lovely um people were fab teammates were great um it was yeah it was a really really good experience yeah is it kind of like the sticks where you were or was it more like oh it was 100 percent, 100 percent sticks um (laughs) and like we would go to all the there's actually have you watched last chance you you know that um netflix documentary there's a netflix documentary and it follows like juco um oh football, like i have football. seen it yeah me and them um, the guy on my team steph i know he's steph the uh, serbian lad uh, oh, yeah. he he went to a juco so he was he we went over to the social distancing we did the social i promise we did um a social distancing there like about very very recently and uh, we sat away from each other and watched this show. And he was telling me that some of the kids that go to these JUCOs are hilarious because they're yeah because because some of them are are just waiting to get into college, and some of them are just didn't get grades or whatever that happens to be. Mm-hmm. It's almost like a kind of a waiting room for a lot of it them, is yeah friends. yeah yeah. So it's just really funny. And he said some of the kids there are hilarious because they're just a bit all over the shop or whatever it is. So he they're just said, so interesting. They're it's very like, funny, yeah. Some of them have some great stories about them and how they got to JUCO and stuff. But um, this last chance you, excuse me, was actually in Independence College, which was in our, oh, it was in our uh, conference. So, right. so it, and like, it shows how in the middle of nowhere they are. And I'm like, oh my God, that depicts Colby so well, because it is, was in the middle of nowhere. Um, and like, were you, were you worried when you showed up? Like, were you kind of like turning up, going, "Where the hell am I? This is crazy! Like, I want to get I, out of here." Or just... Absolutely terrified. I was well, not terrified. I knew that it was an experience that I was going to stick to for a couple of months, see what the crack was. 
my mom and dad were like, were like when if you if you want to come home, you can come home at any time. Don't worry about it. Blah 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 blah. Uh, and it was, yeah, like I just fell in love with the people automatically. Like they were just so so lovely. And you hear stories about people like Americans. And I know it's quite difficult to talk about it at the moment when like so much stuff is going on, but when you hear about these towns that are like they are built basically around the college it is the same as in juco and these this town was about this college and that was it like so like the person that would serve you in the shop would be like the person screaming for you um at your games and it was just such a community so i that helped big time with like missing my family and stuff and being in the middle of nowhere I was like, where do I go for the shop? And they were like, oh, Walmart. And I was like, no, like the shop. And they were like, no, just Walmart. And I was like, oh my God. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> just this massive story. I've been into one. I spent a summer in Michigan in okay. fuck, Bumblefuck, Michigan, basically. Yeah. I just swore there. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Basically, it was the middle of nowhere, Michigan. And my experience was probably, I don't know if it was similar to that, but it was just like the sticks. And then there's a Walmart randomly in the middle of, no, randomly yeah massive. it was yeah that was basically it um Crazy. but like i came home i came home at christmas which was fine and then i came home in somewhere so like i was home a fair bit and like the coach and his wife kind of took me like she kind of took me under her wing and stuff and it was lovely like i still have quite a few friends who i talked to still talk to the coach there um they're just lovely people like they couldn't, couldn't say a bad word about them and it inevitably then set me up for northern colorado which is by far like the best years of my life <laughs> so that was great <laughs> awesome so the in terms of the basketball then going from oh yeah holy faith to even to even to the um colby colby community college yeah big jump or wasn't so uh, bad or big jump but like they weren't the team itself hadn't been that good I was probably one of the best if not the best player on the team so good for you yeah well like In it's, not saying, it's not saying a lot about the team but <laughs> no. it definitely helped me playing because I, I think if you're first year and you're not playing it can be quite difficult whereas like I was starting played nearly every minute of every game so like that was good for me because I was like, oh, well, the basketball is good. I enjoy the basketball. The rules, I mean, like the timing and stuff and um, media timeouts, like like random stuff you need to get used to. Um, nothing major, but it, was, it wasn't it was as tough of a transition and change as I thought it would be. Like okay. basketball is a great sport. It can be played anywhere. And I think that's the beauty of it. There's not, some small rules are different, but like, it's essentially the same. Yeah. 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 It's it's and it's interesting. You said this. Um, just uh, I start to notice teams as I talk to people who went abroad to places like if you went to the states and played in college, and uh, it's, you know some guys say that they sit out the first year or two, and that hurts their yeah. you know hurts their confidence, or they have to go in and play a particular role, and then you sit out. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, at various points in people's career, they have different you know different roles and stuff like that. But it's it probably helped you that you were able to come in and play straight yeah, away yeah it helped that i was to be able to play straight away now when i went to unc that was a different story because i wasn't playing as much however the experience of it and like the role that i had didn't really affect me because i loved it so much and i loved my teammates um, gotcha. like yeah uh it's adele Thornton. one of the you know adele from for now she'd be a yeah. really good friend of mine and one of the first times she met me she was like you played basketball in the states didn't you and i was like why and she was like you're a great teammate like you're like such like a like an enthusiasm enthusiastic for whatever person and i was like that's why she's like no that's what it is about the states it's built around the culture of the team and i was like i had a great team it was the culture like it was not like if you're not playing you're shite it's if you're playing your role will come blah 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 blah, and it was difficult to like it was i'm not gonna say i didn't want to play 40 minutes of a game of course, but yeah. i loved the experience and i loved the team so much you could not complain there was such a cohesiveness um 
which I think made my experience that bit better. It was difficult, but it definitely was. Like I still have some of my best friends from that team and I'm not quite sure if I would still talk to coach as much as I would other coaches. However, she knew people. And I think that's a really important thing for coaches. You have to know your people to play with people. Like you can't, like you need to know personalities. And she definitely did for those few years in Colorado and they were just the best. They were so fun. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, Colorado's pretty cool. My brother, I'm sure he said he went to Boulder, Colorado with his work and he said it yeah. was just all outdoors, just like totally beautiful scenes. And, it's yeah. gorgeous, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, there, there's songs written about the bloody place. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. one of those, <laughs> one of those places. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's, I haven't actually been, but yeah, I obviously love to kind of go to someone like that. Very outdoorsy yeah. and um like mountains and stuff like that, right? Oh, like, you've mountains. You you have like they say you get every season in a day. You got mountains that you can ski and trails. Like if you love the outdoors, it's bomb. Um, and yeah, I like I I we weren't allowed to ski, which is the only thing you have to sign contracts, obviously, in case you got injured. But um, I stayed then for a couple of years after college, which is probably where. You can't find any information. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you stayed, did you? I didn't know that. I okay, stayed, cool. yeah. I sure. I ended up in the States for like six and a half years in total. Um, so I got a job. UNC was just north of Denver. Um, and then I got a job just south of Denver in the Springs. Um, and I worked there for just over two years. So it was, yeah, cool. I loved it. And mm -hmm. did you do, uh, maybe I did find this. Was it personal training? This yeah, is a so flashback. It was Redline Athletics, so it was like ah. personal training, but you were basically helping younger athletes get scholarships because it's so poignant in their lives to get scholarships, obviously pay for college because it's so expensive. So you had like athletes as young as like eight, nine, ten, and as old as like 16, 17 trying to get a scholarship. But then wow. you had like professional athletes, NFL, like uh, combines, all that coming in as well. So every level, it's crazy. every level. Like the requirement for a trainer there was you had to play. You you definitely had to play co collegiate basketball, like collegiate sports. I think you had to play Division One, but that wasn't really said. Like I don't think you had to say that, <laughs> but uh, it was implied. And um, yeah, you had to know your sport inside out because these kids are paying so much money to try and get a scholarship. So that, that just was shows fun. you the amount of them. Um, just this. That's 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 crazy. The the more I hear about the the, le the level of kind of organization and structure they put into just getting kids there, mm -hmm. like it, it, to to these colleges and stuff. And the, the there was a couple of things that people said to me. One that was like one percent of people in America will actually get to the college scholarship. I think that's one, two, and three divisions. It was wow. Paul Cummins said that. And then the other thing that struck me was. I, co the la I haven't released this podcast po ugh, podcast yet, but the last coach I talked to, who's a um, he's a Div One coach, said okay. that the scholarships work like a quarter of a million basically when you add up oh, the total so amount. Expensive. Mine, I won't say how much mine was, but mine was more expensive because I was an international student. So if you're out of the state, if you're in state, it's cheaper. If right. you're out of the state, it's more expensive. And then if you're an international student, it's even more expensive. Uh, I didn't know that. Interesting. Yeah. So if you're out, out of state, it's more expensive. Yeah. Because the international yeah. thing is definitely, when I was in the UK, international students were 15K. And then, uh, yeah, na national students, whatever you want to call them, UK people was like Wait, nine, 9K. UK people. Yeah. And me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I wasn't international at least for some reason. Um, <laughs> But yeah, okay, that's interesting. So then mm -hmm. you, check, you get outside of state. I suppose they do have yeah. the state over there, yeah. So if you had like a small college or like a, yeah, smaller college, you might get more in-state kids because it'd be cheaper for them to go to the school. That's why they might go, okay, where is that? Mm. Yeah, because I, I, I've often noticed that people go to their a college in their own state, but they don't. Mm -hmm. It's cheaper for them. It's cheaper for them. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So we won't ask you much your scholarship is for. I know. <laughs> no, let's, let's just say thank God I didn't pay for any of it. Yeah. Don't need. To, you don't need to publicize that. We don't need to. <laughs> okay. um, it was good. It was a lot of money. Uh, but it was just. I, like was, that. I was a small division. Like it was a small division one school, 
So like yeah. it wasn't even like it wasn't the state school. You had um in Colorado, you had uh University of Color we we were in northern Colorado, so it wasn't like the number one like a huge huge school. school. Yeah. So like those schools were way way more expensive. Yeah, that's that's a good point actually. So that um okay. So big sky championship or big sky mm-hmm. division, sorry. And you got to the yes. did you get to the championship? Is that right? Um we did we never got to NCAAs. We got to the WNIT, um, but we never got to w- NCAAs. We got to championship, yeah, but we never, it never came to fruition for us, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, in terms of the like the level step up there, that was one of the questions I had written down. So, again, like the level of player because you're going to Division One now, mm-hmm. like. Was that something where you were kind of taken back with the the level, or was I it would, more a case of? Yeah, like you. Yeah, it was the level of player, but it was the level of commitment as well. I think I had kind of definitely in like Irish basketball had succeeded on my ability and like going to training and doing like a couple of extra sessions, maybe like not gonna like I. I didn't go out every single day and spend three hours playing basketball. Like I would do during the summer or if like, but I wasn't like, I would do what everybody else was doing. It wasn't kind of like what the States were doing. Whereas when I got to UNC, it was like kids had basketball courts in their back garden. They had gyms in their houses. Like they were playing hours upon hours every single day. And I was like, wow, okay, this is another level that I'm not used to at all. Um, And and it was like that was like that it kind of made sense then when i went to that place in colorado springs or went to redline like the importance of the parents not putting pressure on them but them like amplifying the fact like you need to get a scholarship here lads so it made so sense they, they, they would actually it. say that to the kids then in a sense I had, parents, I had parents bring their kids in when they were seven and going we would rather spend the money here with you guys then pay for a scholarship because we can't afford a scholarship for them. So Mad, put the effort. And, and the, yeah. these kids are coming in at because uh, this is one of the things I wanted to ask you is we get on to the nutrition stuff and the, the kind oh, of yeah. the S and C stuff. But that's that's kind of along the lines of exactly what because I have a question down the end here. I was like, what a, like what age is sensible? Because like seven, like you know, someone seven or even yeah. nine. Do, like, do you do you think that's too much? Like. In your well, personal opinion, based on you know, I know I know there's a very different attitude to sport in Ireland in that mm-hmm. sense, but yeah. Like my whole company is based upon like what, wh- why I set up my company was for younger generations and to give them experiences and the education that I wish I had growing up. Now, am I saying I wish I had that at seven and eight? Absolutely not. I don't think a child needs to be taught about they need to kind of have a guideline about nutrition, like not feed them sugar every single meal, like bad stuff. But like, I don't, I think that especially nowadays, children and adolescents can form such a complex about nutrition and food, especially with social media. So I'm very wary of what I say. Like Mm, I don't have super underage kids at all. Um, But with regards to strength conditioning, like a seven and an eight year old can work on their balance. They can work on their form. They can work on fundamentals. So we did like a lot of fundamentals for running, running mechanics, like core balancing work, like load BOSU balls. Like we didn't implement weights whatsoever, but it definitely set fundamentals that would help them when they would get to a certain age that they would be able to. Um, and just kind of, like we had an area like in Redline, it was so cool. It was like this huge big warehouse and you had like a big track or half basketball court, volleyball court. Like, so 30 minutes of them would be practicing their skill as well. Now, some kids probably felt pressure, others didn't. They were just there for fun. Like that was their fun. So that was good. You want them to uh, think of it okay. as fun. Like, yeah, true. The seven true. and eight year olds should just be having fun. They yeah, be yeah that's, it kind of gets, there's almost a tipping point to like, I don't even want to say 10. I, it's almost like 12. But when you get to 12, it does start to get very competitive, I guess. It does. Yeah, definitely. And I think that also depends on the parents big time and their mm-hmm. level of expectation. That's but true. I, yeah, yeah, very much. I think if you're just giving a general healthier lifestyle to a child and trying to get them off the PlayStation and that kind of thing, and then just teaching them about mechanics, like 
if I was taught about running mechanics, I like I tried to change my running form. Like I wasn't taught about running mechanics in college, but afterwards tried to change the running form, and it's so difficult. Like trying to teach an adult new tricks is so hard. Whereas like these kids had it down to a T, and like it would help them so much when like no matter what sport they decided to play, if they had the bare fundamentals, they're going to be better than the person next to them, regardless of talent they're going to be better when they implement whatever they need to implement, you know? That's interesting. Uh, and you don't think that, yeah, uh, we won't get into the details of run, running technique and stuff. Is it, is it something to do with the plant a flex door? Oh, it's, it's, that stuff? It's, uh, there is, it's everything. It's oh, like, gosh. it's the whole, the whole thing. I'm, yeah. I think there's coaches that are just so like, they're just coaches <laughs> for running mechanics. Like it's that's so crazy. cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I know the two, Becca and Sarah, do, uh, they do athletics. They're really big into it. They're, yeah, I actually saw Becky the other day swimming. So Becky's turned into more of a triathlete at the minute. I saw that, yeah, I see her. I post. see her swimming because I live right beside uh, the sea. So if I go down, I'm like jumping in for a few minutes and Becky's like there in her full-on wetsuit. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, Becky, see you in like an hour. I see you swimming. Have you ever done a uh, triathlon? No, I did a half marathon in like minus 20 degrees weather in Colorado and it was snowing and I said never again, I'm never doing another one. Yeah, I, d- I did a half marathon in 30 degree heat in Portugal and I never okay. will do it again. Yeah. No, no. So <laughs> the other extreme. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's it's not good for my legs. I hated it. Mm. Uh, it was terrible. Uh, there was 50 year old men running by me and I was really embarrassed. And I, I was in I was like, you know, 28, meant to be in yeah. peak physical condition. And there's 50 year olds just like jog. I had to stop because like my legs just gave up and my body wasn't used to it. But it's, my, yeah. I ran this half marathon with my friend and it was called the Fa La 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 half marathon in Colorado. And we were like, wonder why it's called that. But we booked in like October and it was called that because it was obviously Christmas and it was snowing. And she right, got okay. so cold during it, she cried and her tears froze to her eyelashes <laughs> so like I know, it was freezing so we said yeah never again for grand <laughs> okay yeah, yeah that's that doesn't sound like a great great experience no we were done after that yeah the, i did a i was supposed to say that when i did a sprint triathlon with my brother oh yeah yeah never doing that again either that's terrible <laughs> <laughs> although i did beat him so oh good. well that's all that matters i'm all about yeah. competitiveness so and it was in a pool too because like it wasn't really a proper do you know what I mean? Like you're not in yeah. the open water or whatever. So fair, fair play to Becky for, for doing that. Cause I just could Yeah. She's phenomenal. Yeah. yeah she's that's, insane. That's fair play. Uh, right. Where did we go? we go? Okay. So we were saying that you stepped up a level at college, mm. definitely stepped up a level. And then the, the S and C side of it at college and then, and the nutrition side of it. So you're, you're actually doing this degree. What degree was it that you actually did? In- so I double majored. Um, I did sports, exercise, science, and nutrition over there because I was like, well, if I'm getting it for free, I might as well do both. <laughs> so, Good idea, yeah. Because you can obviously then um, pick which one you kind of really want to get. Yeah, to. and like they can't, they intertwined okay. so much. Okay. Um, and I had always been really, really interested in like, I like love food, but always been interested in like kind of health before it was cool like when i was 16 17 it wasn't cool do you know like it is yeah, now it, it um, is cool trendy as yeah. well now yeah i know and i the sports and exercise it was just because i love basketball so much like this is probably going to come into play sometime and then the, when once the two kind of started to get intertwined with each other it's like oh this is really interesting and the snc coach guy the snc coach that we had in unc was a guy called zach and he was phenomenal like really started my law for S- snc um he was so good to work with the team like really really one of the best coaches you probably have ever had and um but the nutrition side definitely lacked it was shite it was just canteen food nothing yeah. specialized for athletes like that you see in some of the co- colleges today like we did have like shakes and stuff like that in our locker room but not like different canteens we weren't like that big um so that was one of the things I always thought about was like the ex the other nutritional side of this, like yes, our S and C and our training is on par, like it's so good, but our nutrition is lacking. Um what do I like 
really need to know about this kind of thing. So that's right. kind of where the interest is there, where the interest all started, I guess. Okay, that's interesting. Interesting to say that because it maybe wasn't a bigger school or just wasn't around then or just kind of the advances yeah. had been made. It just wasn't would, there. It wasn't like I would say I knew some of the guys, like some of the girls dated guys from other schools in Colorado and we'd go watch them play and stuff and their nutrition was their canteen was probably a little bit better for sports people but yet it still hadn't reached the peak of what it is today in like these big colleges and um, right, where okay. you have different you've got different canteens for athletes like that's insane wow. and the money that those colleges have whereas back that's, then that's crazy yeah. yeah it wasn't really prevalent back then i'd say um, as much yeah i think that i think the um it's just taken to a whole other level now isn't it really and of course mm -hmm. the more money you have the more the, the better kind of person you can bring in to go and specialize in that and athletes Absolutely. have their own chefs now and they just it's it's you see those i don't know if you watch any ufc but some of those guys have their own chefs that travel with them to their oh yeah. it's it's kind of uh you don't even have to think about it because that person is doing everything it's the same way as having a personal trainer you don't have to think about what you're going to work out and do now you don't even have to think about what you're going to eat or buy for food you just get that person to do everything so um, yeah and they're they're experts and they're they're chefs and they're you know they know so what they do they know what they're doing so it's like yeah. you could almost um yeah maybe you can do that <laughs> yeah i'll have to become a personal chef or <laughs> maybe not i follow i follow lebron's chef on instagram no I way i find it fascinating to see what he eats yeah it's really oh, cool <laughs> yeah I, i've seen him talk about it just in videos and stuff and yeah mm. he, it looks great. I mean, it looks really he healthy and then also tasty, which is the, obviously yeah. the dream. <laughs> yeah, that is the dream. That's what everybody wants. It just takes a bit more time, that's all. Um, <laughs> that's really that's really cool. So so at this point, you're kind of you're 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 kind of going through college, but you're also kind of learning a lot about nutrition and mm. maybe not getting the nutrition. It sounds like that you were looking to get, but you're. Like yeah, you're, like you're developing an idea in your head of like what where this should really come come into play maybe at this point. Like as a little interest. bit, yeah. I think for college I was just like having the experience and absolutely loving life, like best time ever. Um but it was always in the back of my head and it wasn't until I moved to the job and kind of integrated with other like athletes in different professions and stuff and diff and like real proper S and C people um that i was like whoa okay this is huge like this is really really <laughs> big okay and then that's kind of where it really grew i think um yeah that's i took like courses online was really interested in it took the like the issn which is like a walk for once and i was like back then going this is massive like this is just this is insane and there's so much more that i need to learn and incorporate with the two like the snc nutrition together in my mind just goes hand in hand like it's yeah. so simple to implement and especially for younger people to help them to understand why you need this and why you need that oh they go together so um yeah yeah, yeah that, that, that's that's interesting it, just picking up on something you said there because uh, I fortunately had a really good example of my mother. She ate very healthily and she was an athlete back in the day. Uh, she was a high jumper, international high jumper. So wow. she, used to, she used to eat really good food all the time. And I didn't particularly around 15 or 16, but as I started to get into my 20s, I found that I wasn't, I was more aware because she, I'd always been set a good example. So I just was always in the back of my head that I need mm -hmm. to eat well. So I was kind of reasonably good at not eating crap and staying away from yes. it. And then, of course, with sport, then you don't want to put fast stuff into your body. The more you go to the gym, it's like a positive cycle. Yeah. Um, but obviously, it's not always the case for people. Um, I've lost my train of thought there. I can't remember what I was going to say. But I, I think what I was trying to say was uh, I started to go to the gym and I hung around with people that, that, that did that a lot. And that positively in influenced me, for example, yeah. uh, around 18, 19 when I was at university. But yeah I, I guess it just depends on your your sphere of influence i know that's a terrible Big term but, but it does absolutely, right absolutely absolutely whoever you surround yourself with is like where your interests lie and i think yeah. that really speaks volumes of like your friend groups and stuff and like in college 
yeah they were like we we had the best teammates but like we're also there to have fun as well do you know we're not like solely like we're burning thousands of calories of training like we're not solely oh my god we need to eat this 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 we were educated we had a couple of educational sessions but then like there's just times where you just need to eat and you're a college student and you're just like eating whatever is in the canteen kind of thing but when I went down um to the springs I was I, and they hired me because I was also like I had done a nutritional degree not that I was a certified nutritionist but that I had done a full degree in college and um it was there that I was like whoa okay these two click and it was really really cool it was really interesting um and then just to learn from other like professionals one of the guys used to be um he used to play for an nfl team a football team Bengals, bangles bangles b-n-g-a-s bangles um yeah is there somewhere? i don't know i have not great one, knowledge of nfl to be honest with you. <laughs> one of the guys was a baseball player um one of the girls was a volleyball player like so just all of their different experiences and like some of them played professionally and it was just really really interesting to see the level of nutrition and snc that they had and then it was all about what can we bring to the kids and what can we give to them from our experiences and that's where like my next generation health that's where my company kind of came to fruition was there because i was like we don't have anything like this at home and they need it like they they need this so we have yeah. serious athletes, some really, really good guys and girls, but there's nothing like this, which is, yeah, inevitably kind of where it came from. That, that, that's, uh, I haven't left since I was 18 and come back. And, you know, I, I always harp on about this, but you, you don't really, like when you're in, when you're in the, we won't call it a bubble, but when you're, when you're in a country and you've never left us, there's just no way you can have the perspective until you go to other places and see what, what's out there. Uh, and that's just the way it is, right? It's not, I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not making this up. Um, and when you come back, you kind of see, okay, survey the landscape and you're like, this doesn't exist. It's pre- exactly what you're saying. Um, and you can see, like, w- the question for me in my head is, what do you think the, the gap is? Because Honestly, like, and I can say this, I'm kind of objective in the sense that I'm not a S&C person or nutritionist, but just anecdotally, I can tell you that I think we're, I thought we'd be catching up, but I, I'm not seeing it. I, I don't, I think we're quite far behind. I mean, specifically on strength and conditioning, specifically on things like strength uh, with younger players. And probably I'm talking about just looking at like the under 20s men's, mm-hmm. uh, under 18s men's. I remember being in Germany in 2008 and the under 16s were in lifting. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not saying they need to be in lifting and doing all this every week, but just even the level of commitments, even the yeah. putting some structure around it. I'm still seeing like, it looks like some guys are just doing absolutely nothing. Um, it's, it's hard for me to tell because I'm not actually, you know, on these teams, uh, but that's just, just looking, looking at things haven't come back when you hear a year. I think there's, there's still miles behind, like miles. It's, yeah, it's really, it's really quite difficult when you compare yourself to other countries. When we compare our our country to other countries, because I know that like Kev Foley, Peter Lacey, are like he like, like they're all in there trying to do S and C, um, for the underage teams like basketball and ah, okay. have them there. They have like, so, so there I, are stuff in there. Okay, there, there's stuff in there like um. Who was for the under twenties? Was it Paul? Was it H- Hannah? Kira? Like, was Kira McCarthy? Hannah McCarthy? Kira McCarthy? Like, there is S and C's for these teams. Like, okay. I'm going to be controversial here and going like, other countries can pay their S and C's loads of money, and that's probably why that they're mm. like, yeah. or like the kids can train all of the time. Like they're training in one, like they're not paying. They're like, yeah. e- there's so many variables that need to be put in place. Like. I would go and do like I was doing Paul's um nutrition for his under uh twenty team this year and like unco- unfortunately it's not gonna go ahead but like and, I'm, and I've just more- slated them after you said you train <laughs> but you don't know them like I'm in there with yeah, them but exactly yeah. it's it, it's not known and like 
in fairness to the lads like and the coaches for nearly every team, like they are trying their best to do what they can with the resources that they can, right. but the resources are just so limited. And I know like I can say this, but I'm yeah. also friendly with Connor Meany and I understand the pressure that Basketball Ireland's in as well with right. funding. Like, funding. Okay. It's not it's not like I'm saying they're not getting any like they don't like it's hard for each end. And like I have talked with like Peter and Kev and I'm like, look like like how am I like and then you how is anybody supposed to make a living off trying to help athletes? Like it's it's quite difficult. Um I see if what we you're saying. Get, do you know like it's it's unfortunately I wish it would go just be as easy as oh like the teams that we're playing against like Cyprus, France like we're not playing against France, but like in division B, um what are they doing and what can we do? Like when we played against um was it the Polish girls or the Luxembourg girls like like half of them are pay, are being paid to play. Like the girls are being yeah. paid to play. If girls here were being paid to play, well, we wouldn't. We would have a completely different scenario. Like if the lads were being paid to play for the national team, completely different scenario. Like there's no if, buts, or maybe's. Like yeah, I mean they they they'd be playing every day. They've done it. They've been playing yeah. every, every day, and and they'd be lifting three four times a week. And yeah. They'd be, so so you'd have a lot of time, and you would have that built into your it it yeah. would like it's it's the nutrition would be there somebody would be in for their nutrition they'd be getting paid to work with them like it's a totally different scope when you compare our like our country to other countries like i unfortunately mm. we're not at the, we're not the same level and i do know like i worked with carl carl cabride's um team last year and he had some great snc guys on here like danny warbrook danny warbrook is that his name and one of the other lads and they used to travel up from Kerry just to work with Carl and like we'd be in Dublin or we'd be in all the places like and they're not getting paid yeah they might get fuel and stuff but they're not getting paid they're doing it because they want to help but like how how sustainable yeah, that's is that? that that's not sustainable at all that's I did I mean that's that's I mean yeah and that's kind of what I see like even with our men's team now like um, we have a guy uh Connor lovely fella and he's He's a physio, actually. So he's not really an SC even, but he'll come in and like warm us up and go to yeah. exercises and send us stuff to do. But but even even I can see the younger guys on our team. They're not. Yeah, I guess because everyone's paying for for themselves and because there's other interests there and it's not professional. And at the end of the day, you're kind of doing it. Um, I suppose you're not getting paid. You're just doing it. Maybe sometimes as a hobby, just to get to a certain point, and then you want to just leave it at that. It's always, yeah. it's always never. But I, I just feel like for the younger players that do have the aspiration to go on, that it, it's it's frustrating that I'm looking at these guys and, and I can, you know, because you can just see by looking at them that that physically they're 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 kind of they're behind what I've seen in other countries and maybe it's unfair to compare because you just don't have the, the, um, the funding there to go and get people into, to, no, um, the, to bring the, the resources are there. The funding is not, unfortunately. And yeah. like, I like well, for mercy, we train three times a week. We have a game. Uh, our trainings are at least two hours and we're expected to do an S and C program. Like that's basically semi-professional and we're not getting paid. We love basketball. That's why we do it. But mm. like, it's so hard to explain that to people. And they're, you're like, what? And it's so hard to keep people yeah. in the sport as well because like you're expecting so much from them. Like, oh, yeah, and true. You, you still just have to do it for the love of it because you're like, and I, like, I don't know any basketball artist, like basketball artist player who doesn't, you have to love it to do it because if you want to play at a certain level, you got to put in the work. You have to do it yourself. Like you have to find an SNC coach, or you have to talk to your teams. And I think the last couple of years, um, uh, the nutrition aspect for definite has become bigger and bigger, and it's a more of a topic. And the girls and the boys are really interested in it. And it's not just about like oh, creatine, protein powder, shakes, blah, 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 blah. like do you know as it was when it first started. It's really yeah. about getting down into the nitty gritties and that's what I love and um, 
like at the minute I'm doing online nutritional and basketball, like online nutritional SNC programs, but I'm really honing in on the nutrition because it's a time right now that you can try different recipes. You can see what you like, what you don't like. Um, True. Like during the season, I definitely wouldn't try different recipes because I'd be afraid like the night before a game, I'm not going to try something I haven't tried before. <laughs> because, like, yeah. It could be bad. Be sick, yeah. You know? But it's a really good time to kind of hone in on your nutrition and really see where you want to go like during like this is a big off season for a lot of players so what are you going to do during the time kind of um but yeah it's it's always been the case like our funding hasn't been unfortunately like the history of basketball Ireland for funding isn't tremendous but comparing us to other countries I don't think it's fair because it's just not the same unfortunately yeah I suppose there's no point, there's no no benefit in it. It's just really what we can do with the resources that we have and the funding that we have. Exactly, and we have done maximize so well. that. Like, look at that under-18 team a couple of years ago here, like what they accomplished, and they put basketball Ireland really back on the map again after so long. And like we, we held the Europeans here a couple of years ago in Cork. Like the lads in Limerick this year, that would have been huge for them. Again, and like I know... Been, even been on the Irish team last year with James and stuff like it was definitely going in the right direction again unfortunately this year it's put a pause on it but we do well with what we have definitely we do really really well that's that's a, that's a good perspective I like it because 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 I'm coming back and I'm just I'm just looking just like I can't see what you know what, what the teams are actually doing but it's yeah. just me just looking like physically just looking at some of these guys and going some of these guys need to get bigger and stronger Mm-hmm. At tw- at eighteen, twenty years of age, they need to be bigger than that. They need to be stronger than that. So, so you can see some of the guys. There's like two guys or three guys maybe on some teams, but then some of the teams are just, you know, I guess my expectations are maybe too high in some some situations because some of these guys are just doing it for fun, even yeah. at national league level, you know. Yeah, and like it's hard. It's it's really hard to ask somebody that's doing it for fun. Okay come three times a week you have to do your own s and c we don't have funding for that find somebody or if a club does great or if there's a player on the team like your physio and stuff that can kind of help you but like it's a lot to ask for players when mm. like it's it's tough but again it's why we love the sport we do yeah, it like it's true and and the, as i said before like it's hard for you. I just say, to your point just there, it, it's tough if somebody just hands you or sends you a PDF or hands you a handout with, with workouts to keep it up. If you're not doing it collectively as a group and you're not being, you know, read, mm-hmm. you know, scheduling it in, yeah. being like, okay, everyone's going to meet up and do it together. And that's very hard. Like, let's say we're in Dublin right now and some of the guys live on the north side of Dublin. So it's just not realistic. Yeah. You know, we're we're quite lucky with DCU because during the season we'll have like one or two nights that we'll meet as a team before practice and use the gym, like literally across the corridor from the hall. And oh, have okay. some of the lads that help us, like Mark has set up a pretty good setup there. That we have like the use of we have the use of DCU for free to go into the gym. So it's kind of like, well, you're not using it. Well, that's on you because you have the use of it. Like you're not like it's obviously part of our fees and stuff, but like. We're very lucky that it's there, that it's um, there yeah. and to utilize it. And as a team collectively, like you got to, I think it comes from, I think it does come from more of a top down approach. Like if you see older people, like if you see older players, like myself, Sarah Wood are probably the oldest players in the team at the minute. And we would be the most consistent players working out and doing S and C. We set a tone for the group. Everybody's going to do it. Like, those girls are old. Why am I not doing that? You know, like, you, kind of have <laughs> yeah. to, like you, you guys have way more energy. You need to be doing this more. But like, you need to have that cohesion in the team. I think everybody needs to be built in. If, like, you're not going to be successful. One or two players that stick to it. You got to have a cohesion in the team for sure about S and C nutrition, definitely. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, and you're right. It definitely comes from examples from senior players as well, because if they're not doing it. Definitely, the young guys are not going to be doing it. You know, no, it's, it's not going to happen. And, and probably, even at a, even if you look at the at the club itself, like I'm just thinking, like like a club like Marie, like like they might not have a gym. 
that like beside their court like so they necessarily can't just go and jump onto there before they go in but it's still up to the yeah. club to, to get them to have designated sessions and like, it, it's, oh, kind yeah. of, it's kind of like the it, D- Darren was talking about this actually to me and he was like it's almost like you have to if you really want to be successful and take it to the next level then you almost have to be professional in in an amateur sport and and treat it professionally almost with the the Dublin Gaelic team do with with Gaelic they they yeah. decided that they're going to step it up and their results have, have kind of shown I mean absolutely yeah absolutely and I think I think you're dead right with what what yourself and Darren said it's a 100% professionalism attitude in it's just tough hobby it's a hobby like yeah. at the end of the day it is a hobby basketball is a hobby for a lot of players but yeah. we're professional about the way we go about it like mm. you go like i during the season if i'm not drinking on a friday saturday night because we've got a game on a sunday and i'm out with my friends or like you're somewhere and you're like you're not having a drink no you're not getting paid for it i know i'm not getting paid for this <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, yeah. i like this is my way that I think about the game like I love the game too much I respect the game too much to not go and give it 100% throughout the week and I think I think a lot of players are the same um, especially growing older and like after coming back and definitely seeing the players that are still around and still playing you have to have that mentality if you don't have it you won't mm. be still playing there's no way yeah I totally agree and I, I definitely feel you on the the going out on a Friday, <laughs> on a Friday <laughs> evening and you're with your work crowd and everyone's like, you know, having a drink. And like still the attitude prevails in Ireland that like I've got a game tomorrow and they'll be like, I fine, just have just have one or oh, two. Oh, I know. I'm like I know. one or two will affect me. <laughs> Probably because I'm older anyway, but just that whole attitude of like and, I, Yeah. And they may it may they, not even affect you, but it's still oh I had it like I had two points on Friday, so it's gonna affect my game. Like you'll be second guessing yourself which is what you yeah. do not need going into a game like yeah that. because you, you know that you may have done it before and it may not be the reason why you played bad but you could definitely could have been a factor yeah, yeah. you just don't want to yeah. groggy you want to play your best you want to be yeah. the best version of yourself I know it's, a, it's another corny term but like it, it, it's true you just want to be the best version of yourself so that means you're going to have to sacrifice yeah. going out yeah. sacrifice your time you know, do, do extra you know yeah so, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, it's just one of the things, it was a bit of a bugbear for me, I'll be honest with you. It's a bit of a, yeah, one of these spots I come back and I'm like, I'm almost looking at these younger players going, why are they not in better nick? And I know I'm putting yeah. that very crude, crudely, but like, like these guys should be in the gym the whole time, getting stronger, getting better, doing stability, doing, you know, all that kind of stuff. And they might be, I could be wrong. Maybe I could be off the mark, but I just... I just because I can see talent there. That's the crazy thing. I can see all the talent, and maybe it's slowly starting to come in, and I just haven't seen enough of it. Um, I think it is, but also I think it's slowly starting to come in, um, because like, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. It's slowly starting to come in, but uh, countries were years upon years ahead of us years ago. So yeah, they're yeah, where true. we were ten years ago. So we're catching up because we think it's like cool, but like. If you, yeah. if you, like a lot of the people think it's cool, but like you have to have influential people in the sport to set a precedent. Like if you take the lads, if you take the men's league, you are like you've got young people looking up to super league players. Like Lorcan Murphy is a perfect example of what an S and C can do for a player. Like great example. He's phenomenal. He's still doing S and C. It's like, and he is an exceptional athlete never mind a basketball player an exceptional athlete so like it's people like that that you need role models for younger players and going like he's not like what is he getting out of playing basketball no he's putting in the hard work he's like he's in great nick his explosiveness and his vertical jump is insane so like why not do it to be like him like it's just people like that that you need more of i think in the country to definitely for younger kids to look up to He's a great example too, um, because he's and he's one of these guys. He's obviously worked on his skills too, because he's he seems to have slowly gotten better over the years, mm-hmm. and he's developing himself in terms of basketball. But physically, uh, I don't know. I ended up joining Instagram there recently because of the podcast, and I just yeah. found him on Instagram, and he's he's tied himself to like a bungee, you know those. Uh, oh yeah. The um, what are they called? 
you know, the elastic, you know. Bungee uh, cord kind of thing. Bungee yeah. cord, yeah, bungee cord. And he's <laughs> literally tied himself to a, to his like fence and he's like Yeah, and he's right, yeah. Me. Yeah. I think uh, Jason can you tell me he was pushing a car up the road. I'm not suggesting that's a good idea. I've but, seen uh, I think I've seen that video. Yeah. Like uh, it's insane, but the at the same time. But like I like he that. put in the work great. and it mm. shows like he's a phenomenal basketball player and a phenomenal athlete. It's just we need more people like that and you need, I mean, an Irish, I'm, I do feel for the Irish teams because I know that they're trying. I know every single coach is trying to get people in and they're trying to get people in and being like, look, I can't really offer you much. Like, I can't offer you anything. Right, yeah. Like, so you're doing it, you're doing it for the love of the game and to help the younger generation, but how far that will go without giving people a wage is hard. Like, it's tough, yeah. And you're kind of, especially with the national team that involves a huge commitment yeah. and you're like oh, i can't pay for this so so it almost takes someone who's who's going to give it like our physio for example he's actually a student still so he's kind of has enough time to give but if that's a professional physio potentially yeah. they're not going to be able to do that you know what i mean everything's like, on favor and it's like everything's on favor last year for the irish team um our SNC guy Alan from Cork was doing his PhD at the same time and he was phenomenal. He was exceptional. And he I've never seen somebody so busy. He worked in he worked in the gym in CIT, he was doing his PhD, but was checking in on us every sing, every second day, I'd say, giving us new programs, everything like that. Like you need people like that. <clears throat> He's not getting paid a penny. And he travelled with us, did everything. Like I it's just it's exceptional to see what people will do just to help athletes. Like it's, it's yeah. lovely to see. Yeah. And, and that's a similar experience with Connor and the checking in part. I mean, oh. Connor, Connor will text me after game and be like, how's the legs the next day? And you're like, this is, this is more than my, my mother texts me. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and this is for free. And this guy's like, you know what I mean? Just a really, really good guy. And just, yeah. there's probably, I mean, I know in the UK, I mean, I've played on a ton of teams over there, and there was nobody doing that. Nobody. No, doing that. like I spoke to um, what's his name, Rachel Van Vander Vanderwall. Van Am I saying her name right? Vanderwall, who used to play for, used to play for UL. She's Canadian. Used to play for UL, and then now plays for the GB team. And they just missed out on qualifying for the Olympics a couple of months ago in a qualifying tournament for basketball. And she was, uh, she's an assistant coach for the Irish team. And I reached out to her a couple of weeks ago because I was in the middle of writing my lit review and I was like, I need um, perspectives and stuff. So yeah. I was like, hi, Rachel, never probably met you. But question for you, do you have a full-time, like what was your story with nutrition and nutritionists for the GB team? Like you're a professional, what's right. the story? Oh, okay, she's like, oh no, we, we haven't had one in years. <laughs> like, wow. Right, like, it's just well, they, they're also struggling with funding over there big time and like they they did a huge kind of press release and stuff after they lost and even before they lost but something like that to me i'm like well you know we don't have one and we are not qualifying for the olympics Do you know it's it's yeah it's more it's more prevalent than we think is it's like, more prevalent than you think i think that's that's probably the thing isn't it yeah i mean it just requires so much funding and as a as people call it like a, a minority sport really here it, it just doesn't get the attention and the funding and if they, no it goes back to the funding bit which is it's just sad it's such a pity like thing. when when i went to play college and like about basketball in the states they were like they play basketball in ireland and i'm like yeah what the hell and they were like oh we didn't think it made it that far now they were being ignorant also but <laughs> they were like we didn't think that you guys played it. Like, it's just not a sport that we thought you would play there. We thought we were playing rugby. Well, yeah, we do, but we also have some great basketball players. It's just, unfortunately, it's a smaller sport. But it's a smaller sport, yeah. And you're competing with, with I suppose, rugby's propelled itself now to it, to, and the, the corporate sponsorship is there, and it's kind of Massive, got those. Yeah. yeah, so straight away. And of course, they've found success at the national team level, and then that's televised, so it's kind of just grown. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, grown like, a lot. yeah you need to have success to reap the rewards in our sport big time you know yeah i i, I it's, it's tough it's hard to know where to start with that one that's a whole different oh yeah that's question. a whole different call <laughs> it yeah. is 
but like it, it's kind of funding it always goes back to like it's always funding like at the end of the day yeah. it's kind of like yeah bloody funding um, yeah figure that one out right i'm just aware of time here there's so many more things i actually want to ask you about your businesses i'm just going to ask you a bunch of questions that i wrote down that i always ask people just random questions that i thought of perfect so th th these may or may not make any sense and they, you may have covered them already let's just see what i wrote down. okay uh, oh you may have answered this one kind of so when you were growing up because obviously you love playing you love the game you're saying that uh who was your inspiration like when you were watching this probably some of the girls Def okay, so my first basketball jersey when I was uh like I think when I was seven no when I was nine was Shaquille O'Neal. Um <laughs> All right. and my sister got a Leslie a Lisa Leslie jersey and I was like, No, it's like and I under like I could understand why she picked Lisa like she was the baller, but I was like Shaquille O'Neal is my player, I wanna play like him <laughs> and like the aggression and all that kind of thing. Um but definitely, like, I, like, one time I filled out this thing and it was like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, I want to play in the NBA. <laughs> like, it wasn't the WNBA, it was the NBA. <laughs> but that's also, it wasn't that big, unfortunately, and I didn't really know much about it. But yeah. I would say growing up on a, probably, yeah, you're looking at the, the team, right, that I used to play before or after in secondary school. So you're looking at the likes of, like, Leo Westbrook's, like, like Sarah McGrath, Becky and Sarah Woods, just like, like I really admired the way that Leia used to play when she was younger. Um, I still admire the way she plays now, but like, it was a big thing to me. I can't say anything about Sarah Woods because she's my teammate now. And <laughs> <laughs> but um, and like, like I guess I was kind of like you know the likes of like Lindsay Pete these types of people they weren't that older than me for me to kind of really look up to them but I admired them um, right. and okay. I didn't really un unless I was watching the NBA it wasn't much basketball um but I really admired that team I think collectively definitely that holy faith team that was two years ahead of me I was like oh these girls are ballers like yeah yeah, because you're watching them and you're like, man, some of these yeah. people are so good. And it's just, it makes you want to play more and get better and play with them. So you can just Absolutely. kind of almost prove yourself. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's cool. That's really cool. Um, okay, cool. So what's the next one here? You must, what would be the one thing, what must your, what did I write here? What must your Irish sports, something about Irish sports, people's diets, like what, what's the must change? Okay. It's a, bit um, of a general, it's a bit of a vague one, a bit general, a bit too general. I definitely think that the Irish population as a whole, we're getting better at, at understanding diet. Um, I, I, like, yeah, I think, I think it's more prevalent than ever. For sports people as well, I think they're taking more, a, more of a conscious effort into um, upgrading their own nutritional information before making a decision. And that I think is... Um, now, I'm not going to say that the diet is bad or particular food is bad, but I'm going to say that a lot of people take advice from non-worthy sources. So a lot of girls that I know and I talk to and I work with are like X, Y, Z. And I'm like, where did you hear this? Where did you get this information? And they're like, oh, so-and-so said it to so-and-so, your man in the gas club said it to your one on Instagram. And I'm like, no, like that is... <laughs> your man on the gas club said it's your one on Instagram. You no, know, like it, it's the train of the information that we're yeah, coming yeah. from. And you're the just source. like... Yeah. You're just like, no, like this is not the way that it's meant to go. And I think that's the problem at the minute is on educated sources giving out information and that young people are picking up on and choosing to believe. Like, and that's right, okay. the wrong thing, especially with an athlete, like an athlete that would want to do intermittent fasting and then not eat and not eat before or after a game or something like this because they've heard of so-and-so doing it and it works and like okay right i got you so there's almost like a pseudoscience situation or so, not not yeah, quite but yeah 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 uh, yeah, yeah. And, and you do see a lot of that by the way because i mean you hear somebody advocate that and I, because it's now it's a bit like the whole journalism blog thing like anybody can be almost like a nutritionist at this point if you know what I mean. anybody can no and that's the scary thing anybody can and what they say and if you have a certain amount of followers you can say whatever and some people will believe you and that is the scary thing yeah yeah and of course they're not experts a lot of time i say the majority of times they, they've yeah, tried does it work the for them time, 
yeah yeah that's interesting like, okay. <laughs> intermittent fasting before a game yeah that's oh, a good example actually yeah I've heard okay <laughs> that that's really cool I, I firstly i just i love that you're doing that because i did know this was a massive gap like um and i i, I still think there's there's so much more that it even could be done like i'm mm -hmm. sure you know there's room for tons of people to do this i'd say um, oh yeah and the more uh, education and the more awareness especially for sport like it's just going to get better and better i suppose mm -hmm. yeah um, hopefully I, I mean i'm still educating myself you know like I yeah still and i think that's the great thing that's the great thing about nutrition is like you can still educate yourself as much as possible and that's what mm -hmm. needs to happen is young people need to be educated on the right choices for themselves like you don't need a nutritionist all of the time you need a nutritionist to teach you and to for you to implement what they've taught you and then just to kind of check in every now and again you know like it's not an snc that that person needs to be there every single time but it's just to try and educate you as much as possible which is what i try and do for young people especially at the minute i'm just trying to educate them and go like this is why xyz and they're like oh, okay so that's yeah. what's important i think i just thought of something in my head what what a uh, this is a really this is probably not a fair question but so could you give me an example of like how much because I, I used to think when i started lifting for example that it made me about a 25 to 30 percent better player like legitimately like, like yeah. it improved me like significantly like i remember just noticing immediately i was, I was better at everything that i did on the basketball court. Mm -hmm. in terms of nutrition if you just were doing nothing and then you started to Again, it might be an unfair question, but if you started to, to kind of change your diet and, and you made a, a significant shift into your diet, into your nutrition, yeah, how much better do you think a, like a person could be in terms of like on the court? That's an unfair question. That's a hard question. Um, I think I think even if you did the bare minimum, bare minimum nutrition, like not even great, but all right nutrition, you would get an extra ten percent. I'd say like. Yeah. what i've learned and at the minute i'm studying just purely sport and exercise science so just like n not general nutrition i want to hone in as much as possible and like the ways that nutrition can make a player better like i'm learning about specific things that goalkeepers should take for their vision so that their vision can be better so they can see the ball better like there's so many different strategies that oh. people can take so like if you had the bare minimum 10 percent, like it's there's, yeah, you need to be yeah. fueled, you need to be properly hydrated, and if you're not, I think the most important thing to note is if you're not adequately um, fueled, you won't play well. It's that's the drop-off if you don't do it. It's, it's, yeah. it's much that's bigger. Most and yeah. that's when people will see if like they have a crappy meal or they don't eat, they're not hydrated, you go out on the piss the night before, you will notice the drop-off big time. It like becomes a lot more, right? It becomes... Yeah yeah that, um, that's probably the part is, is if you're doing at least the minimum mm -hmm. in terms of nutrition then you should be okay and you could probably if you take it to the next yeah. level you could go up a certain amount yeah. but if you don't do it which which let's be honest some players are not at all it's meeting the bare minimum then the drop-off can be quite significant yeah. absolutely yeah it's about a good, yeah. good way to look at it okay um well, we kind of covered the snc stuff Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just wrote down randomly wrote uh, organic organic Weedabix discuss. <laughs> organic Weedabix. Um, for example, no, I, I just saw it today and I saw organic Weedabix and I was thinking about the podcast and I was like, organic Weedabix? I thought I thought Weedabix was pretty. Weedabix is pretty bland. Like I like yeah. I've heard people say that you're better off eating the box that Weedabix came from, like rather than the Weedabix. It doesn't really give you much. Like so. <laughs> I would add to weed loads. Um, right, I, yeah. I mean, organic foods are usually better, especially if you can if you can afford them. Great. Afford um, it. Yeah, and the veg, the fruit and veg is probably better, um, and the meats probably better. But again, it's all about what you can afford. Like, yeah, and it seems to be more expensive to eat organic as well, and just mm -hmm. not realistic for younger people if they're they're not no, earning money. Especially they're not like a lot of them aren't cooking their own food so that's the big thing that i have to deal with is the lovely parents so like oh right of course i never even thought of that because they're yeah. essentially the decision makers and the, the chefs as well yeah mm -hmm. interesting okay yeah so you have to educate them as well oh yeah which is great and like a lot of like a lot of athletes are living away from home some are living at home so like 
you have both, but you want the athletes that come to you. You don't want the parents that come to you necessarily. You don't want a parent pushing something that the athlete doesn't want. You want them to take a collective approach. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it, it's now it happens both ways, and that's fine. It's totally fine. You just have to kind of persuade. But you want to, if you could get a joint effort approach on both the parents and an athlete, then you have whopper results because both are into it. Like you have a parent that's gotcha. going to buy the proper foods. You have an athlete that's going to eat them because they bought in. Whereas if your one is one is missing in the loop. It's hard, but it's doable. It's definitely doable. It's just a little bit harder. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, it, 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 it's, you start to see with younger players as well, the parents are so important. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. One of the things, uh, I did my dissertation, interestingly enough, on uh, the psychological characteristics of Olympic athletes. Really interesting. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah, and I read all the papers about it, and the, the kind of take-home message was that uh, it's as the sphere of influence. So basically, it's the... The people that became Olympians had an amazing team around them, and they had parents that really pushed them, coaches that really pushed them, and had mm-hmm. a bunch of people that supported them and got them to there. And it was actually those external environmental factors that got them there, as much as it was their. They obviously were talented, but it was yeah. the people around them that actually helped propel them to that level. So it's very important for parents to to try and help out. So yeah. as, a, as a young person, you can't really ask your parents to do that. You kind of hope that they'll they'll be there, but it's a big yeah. part of it. Actually, I mean, it's it's good that nutrition is becoming more apparent, and parents are more apparent and parents. No, they're it's uh, that they're getting more bought in and they understand it. Um, but if you don't, it's hard, and the parent is usually the one that's putting the meal in front of the athlete, so it's it can be Sausages. quite difficult. <laughs> yeah, the bacon, <laughs> well, they're brand the fries. Now. Yeah, yeah, great, exactly. Yeah, moderation. Yeah. <laughs> Come here. I'm just aware of the time, uh, Anna, but uh, I've got so many more questions. I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to chat about. Uh, um, no, not really on my end. Just, um, no, I was just here to answer all the questions. So. Yeah, I know. Yeah. No, I just said, uh, um, any plugs for your business or anything? I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you do oh, nothing interesting. Loads of plugs. Loads oh, of really? plugs for my business. Well, you can go um, for it. Yeah, Next Generation Health. Thanks very much. Um, I know I am at the minute. I am doing this really, really cool online kind of six week course and it's going really, really well. I have some weird, I have some older Irish players at the minute that are doing it with me, which is deadly. I have some younger, younger. I'll do it. (laughs) Okay, great. Um, It's the six week course and we, I basically give out S and C. Um, new S and C and basketball drills. The basketball drills are different for the older kids. I do younger kids as well. Um, at the minute, I'm not like the younger kids need me to show them all the drills. The older kids, don't, all the older athletes, don't necessarily need that. They know what a behind the back is. Um, and I concentrate more on nutrition. Do at the minute, actually today, I had five one to one calls with the girls, just talking about macros, calories, getting them like kind of their head around it, especially at this time and a few like the problem with them or not the problem with them a lot of them are in college in the states so their their classes are all at regular time so they're trying to figure out when to eat um but yeah that's going on sorry that's going on at the minute and that's really really cool um it'll probably be rolled out for the whole summer because i don't think any camps will be going on so <laughs> parents of younger athletes get in contact or athletes themselves get in contact because you have it's a really, really good deal, and you do S and C basketball and nutrition for six full weeks. So it's um, that's what's happening at the minute. Yeah, I've a new one. That's really cool. I have a new program starting. What's it called? Is there a name on it? Is there like a? No, it's just it's just like on my social media and stuff, and um, okay. I just think I said six week thing. I I used to coach. Um, I still I coach in Loretto on the Green, and I used to coach uh, underage club teams, and I was like, these girls have nothing at the minute, and their parents are probably being driven demented with yeah. them oh. there all the time so i was like oh this is a perfect thing to do i know it's going really well um, yeah so that's kind of if anybody's interested i guess that's a good one to look at and then obviously just online nutritional uh work at the minute i think it's a really really good time for athletes to get involved with nutrition you've so much time you've more time to cook proper foods more time to experiment with recipes it's a great time to kind of re maybe reassess goals with regards to physique or conditioning and working both together um 
yeah so i think a lot of athletes are taking that time to do that at the minute which is deadly it's too difficult yeah and if anyone's watching and knows a younger player and then they're not doing this if they just emailed you you could just even get them pointed like they you're not oh yeah ask them for send them an invoice after chatting to them you but it, even just to get them in the right direction like you know absolutely kind of steer them in the right direction absolutely okay. i yeah that's also athletes i don't it's not just all underage it's a whole different age. like i set up the company for young athletes because i was like oh they need it the most but then it was when it came to fruition i was like wow every age needs this so it's kind of ideal with every age of athletes um, right up to me i also deal with every age of people <laughs> not just athletes but i do do the general public but i i have to say i love working with athletes because i can just i can I, I relate to them a lot more yeah, yes of course this, yeah. this i this a lot more <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah no it's it, it's it's it makes more sense and plus you want to you kind of want to help the next generation of oh, big time. of younger yeah. which which makes sense which is actually makes sense for your name so yeah next next <laughs> next generation, next generation health. Health. brilliant yeah. Uh, I think it's brilliant. Uh, I, I think it's great that you're that you're helping out with the national teams. I didn't know some of that as well. So uh, yeah, and yeah, you're helping yeah. some of the younger players as well. So that's fantastic that you're giving back. That's awesome. Good. Um, mm -hmm. All right. I, I'm going to, speaking of eating, I'm going to have to go eat. Go now, have so. your dinner. An hour and a half later, go have your dinner. Oh, that's all right. It's just brilliant. <laughs> uh, Hannah, thank you again for coming on, by the way. I really appreciate no, it. No, thank you for having me. I really, really enjoyed that. That was great fun. That was awesome. All right. Cheers. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Ciao.